Hello and welcome my art loving friends. So in the very last video, which I will link in the corner for you, I felt like we left things undone. So it is time to finish all my thoughts on these pretty interesting art oil watercolors. Let's get into it. So where we left off last time was that I painted in an Inktober sketchbook that I had that was, in my opinion, hot press watercolor paper. It was really fun. The paints did really well. I dried them out in this palette and even though they cracked and shrunk a lot, they re-wet really easily and were fun to use. So what I did based on the comment of one of my viewers in that video was take the palette bottom that came with this Schmincke palette, because this is a Schmincke palette, even though these are Artwell watercolors. Anyway, it had these metal tabs hold 21 colors. I had 24 colors, so I just squished these three darks down in here and tightened all of this and made my cheat sheet about what colors were where, and it works, and they don't wiggle. So I don't need double-sided tape. I can use the insert that came with the Schmincke palette, and it's great. So what we need to do is try these Artwell watercolors out on Arches watercolor paper. And I'm only choosing Arches because I'm really familiar with how paints work on that. And the fact that I was so impressed with these Artwell paints on paper that was, in my opinion, subpar, made me really want to try them on paper I'm really familiar with. So here we are. However, I did eke out a little section of this watercolor block to do a swatch sheet because I decided I'm gonna keep these paints I might as well keep them in this palette. It's a really cool palette, obviously. If you guys know Schmincke palettes, this one's pretty awesome. I always love having a palette swatch sheet to go with my palettes. I will do that in time lapse for you because, I don't know, it's kind of boring if you've just watched them over and over again. I'll just get it done for you and I'll use my usual salt method and go from there. And with the paper that's left over on this block, I'm not gonna take this off of this block, I'll just tape it off. I will do a painting with these on cotton paper. Let's get into it. They are dry and the salt has been rubbed off quite aggressively. And when I rub the salt off aggressively, nothing came off of my fingers, no bit of color or anything. So that's a good sign. Also, I have a very strong amount of pigment on this little swatch here and it is not shiny at all, which is good news for me because you remember when I did the Schmincke palette testing? <laughs> yeah, lots of shininess. So huge amount of pigment, no shininess. I like that. Salt effects on every single color except this light yellow, which if it does have a salt effect, it's just too light for us to see it. And the ivory black, nothing. And the Van Dyke brown may be iffy, but we'll see. But it's hard to see on such a small swatch sheet. So anyway, I have this because I can put it in my palette. I have put out the lines for a painting here. I wanna do a desert scene because that's what my class at the college would like to do this coming week. And this is a picture taken by a friend of mine down in Moab. She said I could use this for a painting reference. It looks way better on the computer screen versus printed out. So I will stick that up here for you. And I'm excited to paint it on cotton paper with this paint. So I have this little piece of tape because this is on a watercolor block. I don't want to take it off. So I'm just going to protect my swatch sheet here with this tape. However, to see my colors, I kind of need to fold it up. 
I have my two usual water dishes, one clean, one for dirty. My usual brushes, plus the Travel Escoda one, which I really should use. Maybe I will just use just this brush for this painting. It's hard to move away from brushes you know and love, but I know this is a good brush, so I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna put these away and just use this one. Yikes. One thing I noticed when using higher quality brushes, and this Escoda Versatile Travel Brush is a higher quality brush than the Winsor & Newton Cotman brushes that I usually use. When you use these kind of brushes, they take more water in the brush itself, but you need to put more water on 100% cotton paper than you would on cellulose paper. So you definitely need to take your head down, put it at table level and kind of look across your paper and get the right amount of water on that paper. And you want a nice even sheen, at least that's what I like to do before I start. And so then I start in the sky with these blues and it was really fun because I got to use the cerulean blue, the thalo blue, and the cobalt blue. I barely touched ultramarine up into the corner. And in my opinion, that made a nice sky. I would like to try this painting again using way more contrast and like a way more stylized set of colors. So that'll be coming up. And on top of that, somebody did mention in the comments that they feel like these Artwell paints are the same as Mission Gold paints. And that is something that I would definitely like to test in the future. So I will be adding that to my list of things to do is to compare these directly with my Mission Gold paints. And I probably have all of these colors in my Mission Gold paints. I'll have to check the pigment numbers, but I'm pretty sure I can match at least most of them and I will directly compare them. So you may be thinking, well, you used them in this painting. Can't you just know? The answer to that is both yes and no. <laughs> yes, I can tell that I like these paints that I think they are actually fairly high quality. And if you can see the palette over on the right side there, as I'm pulling paint over and mixing that in, I get a huge pigment load with every brush stroke that I put into the pan and onto the mixing surface. So that was never an issue. Like there was always lot of pigment load. And with the cheaper paints, even the Hemi Mia paints that I have been using and loving for my Use It Up challenge, I'll link that video in the corner, I have to dig into my pans more than I've had to dig into these to get that kind of pigment payout. So I'm very happy with that. It also reinforces my decision to have put these into this permanent palette and keep them because I enjoy them. Yes, they shrunk up, they dried up a lot in the pans, however, I really like the pigment payout. Uh, one of you in the previous video also mentioned that it seemed like I was having to layer a lot and I didn't notice that so much when I was doing it and so I tried to pay attention to that during this video and I don't feel like I had to do a lot of layering. In the cases where I did layer, it was because I intentionally wanted to, like I wanted to do a glaze of orange or red over a certain area or darken an area with more deep dark colors, like adding the purple into the brown and so on. So I don't feel like I was layering any more or less than any other painting that I've ever done with any of my other paints. Do I still know how these are gonna be in the long term? Of course not, this is still just my second time using these. However, I was very happy with them. Every time, like I told you, I pulled paint out of the palette onto the mixing well, I was like, whoa, that is way more payout than I expected. So I am glad these are gonna be added to my collection. I have a lot of paint left in the tube. Obviously, the cerulean blue that we had to cut open is still in here and dry. And now that it's been two months since I originally poured these, this one is completely dried out and I probably won't be able to squish it into a palette in the future. However, I can cut it up and make it fit into a half palette or whatever I need to or add water to it and just kind of get a, a gloopy mixture until I can get it to work. So because these were sent to me secondhand, I am not gonna go to the company and ask for them to replace that cerulean blue. I don't think it's necessary because I like to use my paints dried out anyway, so I will just figure that out. All right guys, so in my final painting here, I'm not fully happy with the amount of contrast I got. I wanna try a more stylized version of this painting. So I think that that'll be something coming up and it's fun to use these paints. There's such a nice selection of colors here that I will be glad to dig into these again. Off with the tape. 
I know it looks weird with the swatch sheet right there, but that's okay. And I like to take these off the blocks with my rulers. This one is slightly thicker. This one is the travel one. It's slightly thinner. Sometimes the thicker one works good. Sometimes the thinner one does. But regardless, stick that in the block. Take that around and we have the painting. Now we can separate it with a paper cutter. Perfection. Now we have a nice little painting. A swatch sheet here that I can also trim. And no, I still have not got new replacement blades for my paper cutter yet. So I'm still using it with dull blades. But look at this. So pretty. So I will round these corners slightly with my corner rounder, put that through the laminating machine and have a nice swatch sheet in here for that. And on the back, because I didn't leave any room on the front on purpose, I will do all of the labeling. So I'll do more than just the color name. I will also do the pigment information, the transparency and the light fast rating according to the tubes. And as I told you in the last video, that is all listed on every single tube. I'll also put all of these in the list to do light fast swatch testing on. So I have three palettes now that is in a pile to do light fast testing on, plus the Holbein gouache that was sent to me and a couple of other things I haven't gotten to yet that I will show on this channel. All right, that was super fun. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now. <laughs> I can't even get it out. Let's just get started already. Enough talking, start doing. Hang on. <clears throat> <sighs> Can't breathe. <laughs> Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Here's my printout. Here's my painting. Printout, painting, printout, painting. <laughs> okay, I'm having way too much fun with that. <laughs> crashed. Okay, bring it back. <laughs> or just be adorable. That works too. <laughs> the finger. <laughs> Whoa, wipe out. Oh, you missed your mark, dude. There you go. Oh, oh, got distracted by the big dog. <laughs> the big dog.